It's James Fathers Rights and Resources hashtag how I got custody. So I had a made a comment or a post on Instagram. This dad decided to keep the kids longer than the mom wanted him to. They don't have a court order. Mom calls the cops like a lot of psychotic mothers do. They think they own the kids. And he stood up to the police and made them go away. They couldn't do anything. He also said that the police said, well, you probably should give the kids back. It'll look better in court. Now, I told him he, he called, uh, he, he texted me, so I posted his text. And I told him, you know, you should have told him, why are you giving me legal advice? And, you know, if that happens and the cops say that, you know, I'll, I'll have a conversation like this. Why, why are you giving me legal advice? And they'll say, oh, I'm not giving you legal advice. You're telling me that if I don't return the kid right now and it's my child and we both have rights to our child, there's just a debate right now. You're telling me it will look bad in court. So you're telling me when I go to court, the judge will frown upon it. That's what lawyers do is give advice as to what the judge is going to feel about it. And you're making a conclusion as to what the judge is going to do. I watch a guy on Instagram and TikTok that got full custody of his kid without an attorney. You know, a white male with a biracial child that got his full custody of his daughter without an attorney when she was seven months old and destroyed a guardian litem and an attorney. Now, your stupid ass would never tell me that that's possible. So why should I listen to you? And, you know, in any case, the cops went away. The guy also said that his family was saying, don't keep the kid. Just keep it. Give the kid back to the mom to be civil. This is some punk sissy coward bull crap. And I hate when families do that or your friends who never won in family court give you advice. And you're dumb enough to follow them. Like if your friend has never fix the toilet, would you ask for plumbing advice from them? If they've never done a transmission overhaul, would you ask them how to, t how to teach you how to do it yourself? If they don't know anything about medicine or health or they're fat and slobby or they smoke and they got lung cancer, would you ask them what's the best way to take care of your body? How is my gender so stupid that we listen to advice from people who've never done something before? We're so dumb. We just, it, it, like, we lose our brains and balls when it comes to this stuff. But this guy, and this guy wasn't listening to his family, but his family was saying, oh, be civil. So the mother's a control freak, narcissist, child abuser who manipulates a child and thinks she owns the child and has no regard for the child's relationship with the father. And is a psychotic control freak. And you're supposed to placate to that? When did, when did they, did they tell the Jews, oh, just go along with what Hitler said? Do they tell people in Jim Crow South, oh, just go along with what the white supremacist said? Just go along with it. When somebody finds out an injustice, they stand up to it, or at least people with balls do, where everybody stands on the sideline. So I don't want to get involved. That's another, they just do another thing. Like, so he, this guy's family, they probably wouldn't write a declaration bashing the mother because like, oh, I don't want to get involved. Oh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Oh, I'll write a declaration that's nice. You're going to court to fight and the other side is crucifying the dad. And a family says, oh, he's a nice guy and he gets to work on time and he's never missed a day of work except one or all this stupid stuff just because they're a bunch of pussy little sissy cowards who don't want to actually say something bad about the psychotic narcissist who controls everybody. So that per the, the evil person is controlling all the good people. This is, it's literally insane. Like people will talk bad about the crazy baby mom and the crazy baby dad off the record in the, in the court hallways, even at school on Facebook everywhere, except in court when it counts. Oh, I'll just try and be neutral and try and be nice. It's insane how nobody has any balls or they're worried about what people think or they think being nice, the fake phony bull crap. When it's time where the rubber meets the road, when it's time to actually do something, when it's game time, then everybody pretends that reality isn't reality or they don't talk about reality. You know, these attorneys go to court, they'll talk at the law firm. I worked at McKinley Irvin, a Seattle law firm, the largest family law only firm in the state. They don't really, their owner, Sands McKinley, once said, um, you better be billing seven. I was a legal assistant. You paralegals and legal assistants and clerks. Um, there's a little hierarchy of, of assistance under the attorneys. You guys better. Oh, actually, he said this to all attorneys too, but you better be billing seven and a half hours a day out of the eight hours you're here. If you think about a client, you better bill them. He also said that he likes, um, divorce cases where there's a million dollars and million dollars in assets or more because those are more fun and people pay up. I don't know how this stuff is even fun. 
but I was working. I worked at McKinley Irvin. The attorneys would talk off the record in in the hallway or just after a court hearing. I can't believe they did the dad like that. You know, you know, the mother got away with murder. If the dad did that, they would have they would have put him in jail or something. And she just was doing this to the kids and that to the kids. They would talk about the bias out of court when it didn't count. But when you go to court, it, you know, I've seen one lady like a uh, a client was requesting this, that, and the other, and, and she's scratching off what he was requesting. Like it's unrealistic, because when you go to court, you're supposed to cater to the court and placate to this and placate to that. Why? Not because I looked at the law, it's because this is what this is what we do around here, around these parts. It's the MO, it's the culture, it's the cliches, it's the way we do stuff. Instead of looking at the law and looking at the science and the data and the facts and everything and saying, oh, this child needs to live with the father. No, let's not do that, that doesn't work. Punk ass, sissy, bitch made cowards. Sick of this bull crap. And then family doesn't help out because they want to be nice and want to be neutral. You know, Dante, who wrote Dante's Inferno, I don't even know about all his works or anything like that. I just know one of the greatest quotes I've ever seen is from Dante, who wrote Dante's Inferno. He said, the, the, the worst places in hell are reserved for those people who in times of crisis stay neutral or stay on the fence. There's a time of crisis, and you're sitting there on the fence, which the other the other side's winning. Hitler's taking over all Europe. You're just sitting there watching, like Chamberlain was nego- for, who was the prime minister of Europe was negotiating with Hitler. When Churchill took over England, then we they went in there and, the, and along with Americans and smashed Hitler. Okay, you smash a bully in the mouth. You don't keep giving them their lunch money and saying, "Oh, I can't believe how he's so oppressive." Stand up. You know, if you think about bullying, if just a few kids out of school would jump a bully, they'd shut it down. You got 99% of people don't like bullies. So why does the bully get away with bullying? It's an intimidation thing. It's a it's a manipulator thing. In the spiritual realm, it's a witchcraft Jezebel thing. Everybody's afraid to be the first person to stand up instead of it. Every, all the 10 people surrounding the bully who are afraid to step in and say, Boy, this poor nerd, he shouldn't be doing anything. Everybody's sitting back at bay. Out of fear, if all those people just jumped him and beat the snot out of him, he would stop. But, you know, this is, we're talking about family. We're talking about the life of children at stake. I had a a bunch of people who I was friends with. Oh, I don't want to get involved. And I had some people who wrote declarations who were like, it's the right thing to do. But I can't believe these punk, sissy, bitch, made little fruity feminine cowards are like, oh, I don't want to get involved. And there's a, the other person's doing evil. Oh, I don't want to call out evil. So I also want to point out, you know, on my Instagram page, I, I when I posted this guy who uh, made the w- woman go away, this guy comes in in the comments and say, well, I've heard a lot of kidnapping stuff, or there's been a lot of kidnapping charges for that. You heard from where? From what? See, my gender gets paranoid, or they'll come in. I got an example of a guy who stood up to the cops, kept his kid overnight because he stood his ground. Then some guy just comes in and says, well, I heard kidnapping charges happen with that all the time. Who gives a damn what you heard? This worked. And what are you talking about? And where are you getting that from? Where's the law in your state that says that? See, we, we like to talk stupid, stupid bull crap, brainless zombie, dumbass, simp, sissy, pussy, coward bull crap. Why? Because we heard something. And us punk, sissy, effeminate, limp wristed coward dads, we want to default to whatever's the cowardly easy way out. Here's a guy with balls. He stood up to the cops. He had a little confrontation with the cops. It was peaceful and they had to go away. Oh, that's so hard to have to do that. I would have to grow at least one testicle and, and have the courage to stand up to the cops and stand like, if the cops came and say, hey, we need to take your car. Your wife wants to take it and you won't let her. We're going to take it from you. It's your car and in your driveway. Wouldn't that be stupid? If, if you said, okay, you would say, wait, it's my car. See, we know how to do stuff with materialistic stuff we own, but we're a bunch of punk, sissy little bitches when it comes to our kid because we think women own kids and we can't use friggin' the common sense logic that God gave a monkey to figure this stuff out. And they were like, oh, well, I heard that there's um, criminal charges for that. Where did you hear that? I've, I've seen guys, when I ask guys, like, why don't you just keep your kids? Oh, Amber Alert will cut. They'll put an Amber Alert on me. Who's usually, who's usually involved in Amber Alert? Somebody who has a restraining order or somebody who's a total stranger. You didn't, you didn't even know what you're talking about. You just want to default and have an excuse to be a punk ass bitch and not act like a man and be the, and act like the father of your own kids. Oh, let me find out what excuse is it. Oh yeah, I remember on the news one time I saw one thing. I don't remember what happened, but that probably applies to me. So that's my excuse where I don't have to grow some balls. I can go on and on, but you get the point, hopefully. Grow some balls and fight. If you don't know what you're doing, call me. Get a consult.